Good day everyone and welcome to this setup tutorial for the Motion Smear Note Group. Now when you've purchased and you've downloaded the file, this is what you get when you open it. Now basically this is just the demo scene that you also saw in the video on the product page. So if you render this particular frame, frame 109, it's not a frame in particular, it's just because it's nice and quick, you will get the following. Very simple, very pretty. Love the result. So let's quickly go over the node and then I'll help you guys set up a scene. And I'm also going to include a blank version of the scene so you guys can play with it, set it up yourself, and just kind of learn the ins and outs of the node group. So in the compositor, uh, I'm going to cover the controls inside the node first. Okay, so when you look at the node on the inside, you see that it's fairly well connected. Um, I also um, did my best to kind of organize it like the um, like a motherboard, a circuit board. That's the one I was looking for. The word it looks like a circuit board. So the additional controls that you find are on the inside above the input section. That's what this more controls inside thing is for. So let me show you. So we've got minimum speed, maximum speed, the spike samples, the fill samples, and of course we have our blur strength. So let's quickly tackle speed. Um, speed is, uh, how do I phrase this? Uh, a little bit of a tough cookie. <laughs> because it doesn't operate the way you think it would. Um, when you see minimum speed or maximum speed, you think that is going to affect the size of your blur. Uh, in other words, how big it's going to be versus how small. Not the case. Uh, you can see minimum speed and maximum speed as bookends bookend values. Um, the Blender manual calls it like a, calls it a mask. Let me show you. It says the minimum threshold move, uh, for moving pixels can separate the hardly moving pixels from the moving ones, especially when the camera itself moves. The vector mask can become the entire image. The vector mask can become the entire image. So um, basically what it says is your minimum and your maximum speed acts like a mask for the blur. Obviously this is combined with our depth information to um, give us occlusion and all sorts of other cool effects as well. So let's get back. Now we get the um, Minimum and maximum speed here, it's set to 60 and it's set to 1000. Now the reason it's set to 60 is so that we don't get spikes just because somebody is waving or just because somebody is walking along or something like that. So 60 is a very good value to really get your spikes going without interfering with everyday kind of behavior. That doesn't mean you can't adjust it. You can make it a lot earlier if you're working with something that's uh, like slow motion or, um, you know, you're making like a custom frame or whatever the case might be. So that's where you would use that. So the maximum speed is also a clamp just like the minimum speed is, the maximum speed is as well. So the maximum speed is set to 1000. That means the absolute max that the um, vector blur node can handle is 1024. So I set it to 1000 without knowing that it's 1024. <laughs> so I just decided to leave it at that because that last 24 is not going to make the biggest difference. It's just not. All it means is that your um, smear may be a few pixels smaller. That's it. So if you set your cap for maximum speed to something like 70, let me show you what happens. See what I mean? Basically what it does is it says that your maximum speed is the maximum speed it's going to tolerate. Um, anything above that is going to be clamped at 70. Okay, so what you want to do, if you want your blur strength to be more or less, in other words, the size of it, the distance it covers, that sort of thing, you have to adjust your blur strength because that's what it's for. On the Blender manual, it calls it the shutter speed, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just check. Yes, Blender's uh, Blender manual calls it the shutter speed. So there you have it, that's your blur strength. So samples, uh, we have two settings and they are clearly marked. This one is for the spikes, this one is for the fill. The spikes don't need as much because we kind of want that rough 
pointy breaking up kind of vibe going and for the fill we want it to be more smooth so obviously spikes would get a lower value fill would get a higher value but they're still configured in such a way that the node isn't excessively slow because you have to remember that basically what it does is it kind of cuts out the shapes and it places them along the curve that is generated from the previous frame the following frame and the current frame so you have 45 iterations of the image going across there so it has to cut it out space it cut it out space it and it has to add opacity and all that kind of stuff so that does make it a fairly heavy node it is it is that's why i made it as low as possible to still get a good result because it is fast and um, be practical and still look good for um, static setups so that is all our inside control so let's move to the outside Okay, on the outside, I just removed the backdrop so we can see more clearly what is going on. We have a very, very simple setup. Now, I know it doesn't look very simple, um, especially for beginners and stuff, but I want you to know that this is not complicated. I did design it with an end user in mind to make it as simple as possible, but to also give you as many features as possible so that no matter the kind of environment you're in, this will be extraordinarily useful to you. So let's take it from the top. So we've got our passes and our image. So we are using the image, the depth, the normal pass and the vector pass. These you get all in your um, settings over here, your render settings. So let me go there. So there are the passes. Okay, there we go, we've got the data. <laughs> For some reason, they will minimize. I have no idea why. Anyway, moving on. So the combined is the image, the Z is the depth, normal pass, normal pass, vector pass, vector pass. Everything else is extra. Um, I do have to emphasize that if you do want only specific objects to be smeared, which I know you do, you are going to need either cryptomat or material index or object index or whatever index you're going to use. This is also very beneficial if you're going to do outlines. So um, I typically use Cryptomat and I typically use Material because it just gives a little bit more control. That's all it does. So obviously uh, in my objects mask, which you can see over here, all I added was the, um, the two monkeys. That's it. So all it's going to blur is the two monkeys. On the inside, I built a a little group node that is able to mix the vector pass. All you do is you just split it up. You still use the mix nodes to um, mix your RGB and alpha, and then that just gets combined again, and that gives you your full value. So it's possibly that it was cut in three <laughs> or four of his alphas there too. Anyway, moving on. So the camera clip start and end is to um, work with the depth information to create the motion mask. Now, um, this is not the same motion mask that is used by the vector blur itself. That is internal. This motion mask is one I built um, a few years ago because I was working on um, a feature for uh, lines, you know, highlight lines, which I will um, put on plane swap. I'm still working on it. I'm trying to get it on plane swap as quickly as I can. Uh, motion lines. And the problem was, is when the objects weren't moving, there was nothing to stop the spots from appearing that I used to create those lines. So I had to find some way of using the vector pass to tell Blender, this is something that's moving. Don't touch it. That's not moving. Don't touch it. Don't don't let it. Don't let anything show up there. Oof, add that one backwards. <laughs> so um, that's what that does. So the camera clip start and end is specifically for that to be sure that your depth and information plus the camera clip end and start is all consistent. So to find this setting, you simply select your camera and you go into it, and you'll find that you have your clip start and end over here. You just put in the same values as long as they are in meters. Unfortunately, this can't be driven because if you, for example, delete your camera, the driver is broken. Simple as that. So it's just something that you have to input yourself. It's not a big deal. 
Okay, so the outline mask is if you are using a custom outline mask. That's if you actually want to use one. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I just find that it's not necessary in most cases. Uh, sometimes it can create all manner of um, issues. So, uh, you know, like darkening your smear or uh, something like that. So um, that outline mask is specifically to remove the outlines before it smears. It's a very effective method. And the Gen outline mask erosion is exactly for that purpose. Um, generally, if you generated a mask from the image, let's say you have existing footage and you want to um, remove the outlines because you've already got a vector pass somehow from the existing footage, you want to be able to properly clear it out. And sometimes your generated mask is too thin. That's what this um, mask erosion thing is for. So the reason it uses the word erosion is because it refers to the filter dilate and erode. Um, it's not going to actually erode your mask, so <laughs> that's not uh, what it does. What it does is it uses that filter to thicken the mask out so that when you do um, remove the outlines for the smear that there is little to nothing left of the outline. That's all it is. So you'll you'll notice that when I connect it in the next uh, project as well, I'm not going to um, leave it connected. I'll show you how it works, but I'm not going to leave it connected. So the spike outline color factor is uh, simply to allow you to change the color of the um, spike outline. You can use custom or you can use original. Um, that's pretty much straightforward. Custom is using the custom color input and original is just black. Because what else is it going to be? <laughs> okay, so then we have the spike pattern offset and the spike pattern scale. Um, the offset is simply a control for you to make the spikes change faster over time. That's all it is. Uh, or if you want to use the node in multiple instances but you don't want the masks to look the same or the spikes to be in the same place or whatever, then you can just offset them a little bit. It's it's all based on a Veronway texture anyway, so the the changes should be fairly predictable. And of course spike pattern scale is just the scale of the texture. And then you see that lovely little note that says more controls inside and that is what takes you to the inside. Uh, do note that it won't necessarily always open on the panel. Um, I don't know how to make Blender open on a specific part. Um, but just know it's at the input section, so it's all the way to the left. Simple as that. Okay, so let's set up a project that doesn't have this thing inside of it yet. So I made this clever little animation of a lamp. Very cute. <laughs> so let's just pick a nice frame that's got some motion in it. I am going to um, emphasize the motion a lot because it's not moving super fast. So let's take that for example, or I want to take this one that it opened on, frame 50. I just want to show you what it looks like. This is obviously still cycles. Uh, um, EV does not have a vector pass as of yet, as far as I know. So we're just, I just used basic toon shaders, basic lighting, just um, made sure that all my toon shading is nice and crisp. That's all I did. So if you want to study this project for my setup beyond the compositor, you're more than welcome. Okay, so let's just quickly go through the stuff that we need. Let's add the node. So what you go is you go into the compositor, as you can see, hasn't been added yet. So no cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so when you've, if you've got the file, all you need to do is you need to append it. So what you do is you go file and you go append. You go to the file, no tree, get it, um, and it will add everything. So I'm going to take you through that. So append. This is my file, the motion smear one. Uh, yours might say a one in parentheses because I had to re-upload it because the compositor box was unticked. Composite box was unticked, so you go into that, 
and it says node tree and then you select the motion smear spikes one not the others the others will come with those are those internal functions i told you about so um, they're just there for efficiency but you can also use them separately so you consider this like a five in one type thing <laughs> if you want to you can already set it up as a fake user just in case you accidentally delete it and save the file and close it and whatnot so you've selected just the one, you say append, boom. Now make sure use nodes is ticked, otherwise you won't even see this if it's not, but make sure it's ticked. And then you can go shift A, group, and there they all are. So spikes, you can see you need to just make it a little bit larger. Now before I'm going to tick backdrop, I wanna just set this up first because this is quite a intense processing node. It uh, depends on your computer. Uh, mine is quite old, so it will be a lot slower on mine than on yours in most cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide it into place and I'm going to connect the depth and go over here to our passes and just tick the other ones that we need. So I'm going to add, of course, my material. Um, and that is good. I don't see anything else that we need. So going to connect normal and vector. Now, I uh, do realize that if you want to do outlines for your shot, uh, I recommend doing them before this node because trying to add the lines afterward will ignore your smear and we'll just put them over. Yeah, that's, that's not ideal. It's just not. So let's not do that. Um, I think I made it all. I'm going to use object instead today because it's just the lamp and I want the whole lamp to respond. So uh, let's do that. So I'm going to add a filter, not filter mat, crypto mat, not the legacy one. We're using the new one because it just connects to the image. Uh, do remember this is not Blender 3. Um, I'm using Windows 8, so I can't open Blender 3. There's uh, an API file that has to do with Windows scaling. My computer is too old. Uh, ach, my Windows is too old. The version I have is one version below the one Blender uses, Blender 3 uses. So I'm going to have to upgrade my Windows or something else in order to get that specific thing. Okay, so let's get this set up. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to render a single frame, making sure that compositing is on, sequencer is off, and we're good. So I'm going to quickly hit render on this. Let me just save. I have the clean one saved separately just in case I accidentally tried to save over it. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to turn on the backdrop with just the image connected to a viewer node. So shift A, output viewer. There we go. And now I'm going to say mat, not mat, image. Um, and I'm going to tick backdrop. There we go. Now you're not going to see much going on here because nothing is selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus and I'm going to hover it around. You can see it says lamp base or plane, whatever. So that is what I'm going to pick. That's easy. <laughs> Okay, so we got our object mask. That is lovely. So let me just show what that looks like. White is what you want, black is what you don't want. That's as simple as masks work. Okay, so let's put this over there and that over there. So by default, you will see a response now. And there you have it. There you got some spikes forming. So if you um, have a situation like this where you're using something that's running a little slow, you uh, may want to make sure that your spikes appear sooner. Um, I've already made it appear a little sooner than 60. I think I made it like a third faster or something, but this might still be a little too slow for you uh, for the spikes to appear and to merge more with the um, original object. So what you do is you just go into the node and adjust the speed um, to your heart's content, the minimum threshold.
Uh, do realize that it will affect your spike length and how quickly they do appear as well. So just keep that in mind. If you're a more advanced user, I can recommend you adjust the driver for it. Now where you find that specific driver is on this node group over here. This one, the four anime motion mask. Now, as you can see, the maximum speed is already at a much lower setting. So um, you can make it a lot shorter and stuff like that. You can adjust your minimum speed, adjust that driver as well. You can find them when you open this area and you select drivers. You just look for those that say minimum speed, maximum speed. So there's the minimum one and the maximum one's already selected. Press in and go to drivers. And there you go. So the maximum one is the one I already adjusted to make it faster, make it appear faster, sorry. Um, so you can make it appear even sooner. It's your choice. Okay, so I'm going to leave it as is because this is just a demonstration. You can play with this in the blank file. So um, the camera settings is already correct because I didn't change it, it's the default. As you can see, 0.1 and 100, which is lovely. And um, now we are going to do some very, very quick outlines. Nothing fancy. This is really nothing fancy. Uh, and I'm also, I'm considering whether I should color them or not. Let's color them for the interest sake because you can already see that the original one is black. So let's change the color and let's make it like a blue color and let's make it custom. And now you will see that it becomes a beautiful bright blue. Chapow! Look at that. <laughs> it's a very cool tool. It's a really, really cool tool. I love it. Okay, so let's quickly create um, the outlines for this. So I'm going to create a separate viewer node so we don't have the heavy burdened uh, work here uh, for the compositor, not me specifically. <laughs> So go color mix and add the same mask that we used before. We're going to put that in there, of course. You can leave it on white for cycles. Uh, the reason I'm leaving it on white for cycles is because um, cycles is normals have a black area like that. I don't know if it has negative values, probably does. But using white gives you a much higher contrast for your edges, giving you slightly better outlines so I recommend it. Okay, so that's good. Now we need to add a filter and filter. We are going to be using Laplace or Laplace, however you want to pronounce it. And we are going to immediately smooth it to get rid of that little double pencil vibe. And of course, that's followed by a color ramp to make it black and white and sharpen it up, not too thick, just use discretion, it's up to you. And of course we have to finish it with some anti-aliasing. Boom, outlines. So you get a lot of value out of this. <laughs> anyway, moving on. So um, we have our lines here now. So what you can do is you can use this to create a colored outline. Um, this is a bit of a convoluted process, but it depends on what you're looking for. So I'm quickly going to demonstrate how it works. And if you want to, you can buy my outline systems as well. I'll put a link in the description to those as well. Okay, um, they're very cheap. So, so let's quickly get a filter, this filter, I'm looking for in paint. And I'm also looking to convert. So I'm going to set my alpha and we're going to invert. So filter and color invert. There we go. So this is going to be inverted and that's going to be our alpha. We also want our image. The reason we want to do this is because what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch out the area around the outlines so that when I blur them to fill them in, they um, don't give me any strange values. 
I don't want any other stuff interfering with it. So replace the alpha. Do realize that it might not show correctly. Let me show you. See what it does? It's, it's, a, it's a grayish value instead of the um, nice clear one. But you have to use replace alpha. Um, if you just apply a mask, it can interfere with already existing alpha stuff. It's, just don't go there. Just don't do it. <laughs> So then you get your in paint, give it a decent value. Um, let's say 90. Doesn't have to be super huge, just has to expand slightly to give us a consistent, stable color. That's all it does. You can see that there's this patch around our object now. And this gets blurred. So filter, blur, and use. No, 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 blur, 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 blur. I'm going to use fast Gaussian or Gaussian or whatever. <laughs> if you want to pronounce it banana, you just go right ahead. I am really not one of those people that will get offended at that. Okay, so that's good. And we're going to mix this with a darker color. Uh, the reason I mix it with a darker color is because uh, I'm a fan of that old Disney outline look. Um, Disney used to um, color their um, characters with a, a beautiful colored outline in their feature films, the 2D feature films, like Mulan and Tarzan and that sort of stuff, that era. I think they called it the golden age of Disney. Anyway, so what they did is they colored the outlines, but they made them just a smidge darker. But it, the fact that they were colored gave the image this soft and polished look. It was just so cool. I absolutely adored it. So that's why I just mix it with a little bit of black, um, not too much. And then that goes into a mix. Or, or you can just put that directly into the um, thing. Let me just get the color. Okay, but that's for the spikes. That's not my general outline. I'm going to just use it for my general outline. I think I should use it for the spikes as well. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so um, where's my outline? There's my outline. So I'm going to use this for my general stuff. Just want to put that in there and connect it. See what that looks like. Yeah, see, I'm going to have to just make it a little bit darker. I'm considering that this is a little too thick. I think that looks better. Okay. Let's just make that a little bit lighter. Okay, that just gives us a slightly colored outline that just gives it a little bit more of a polished feel. Okay, and then that will become our main image. And of course, it's already our custom color. Okay. Let me just delete that one. Okay, and then we just give it a few seconds to process. And there we have some custom outline color going. There's one thing I forgot that I quickly want to add. Um, this is just a bonus. This is nothing to do with the actual node itself. There is another method you can use with the in-painting node to create um, colored outlines. So let me quickly show you how to do that. So you can follow this one, which does give you a little bit of a mix between the object and your um, environment, which can create a greater contrast. But there's um, another way that can focus on your object's color versus the um, environment. So what you do for that is you go for your mask, your object mask. In this instance, uh, you just mix it with the actual object. Let me just see that. I think 
I'm just zoomed in too far. Yeah, I'm zoomed in too far. <laughs> that explains a lot. Okay, anyway, moving on. So we have um, this now. So this is going to become our alpha mask. So taking, of course, the alpha there with the image there and looking at that. Let's just see what it says when I apply it as a mask. That is correct. I do need to uh, shrink it in a little bit so that it eats into the object a little bit. So for that, you're going to use a filter, dilate and erode. A very common thing for me to use, it just is, you're going to take it down to minus one or minus two. And we're going to use an in-paint node. You can also use 90 or you can use a little bit more. If you're unsure about how much to use, I'd rather use a little bit too much. So 200, 200 will look, will look great. Now look at the um, in-painting over here. You can see that it's darker and there's errors within it. Now look at what happens when I say replace alpha. Suddenly it's bigger and it's clean, it's wonderful. That's why I say you have to say replace alpha, not just apply mask. Let me show you that it's not just the image, see? Okay, so then we can just blur this one. It goes into there and it gives us a very nice result as I will demonstrate in a second. Okay, I'm just going to have to find a different, let's use this frame. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. So there you can see you have nice deep red outlines for the pot and you will have nice deep dark green outlines for the lamp itself. So this is just another method. It's not that there's a correct way or a wrong way to do this. It just depends on what the look is that you're trying to achieve. So if you achieve the look that you want, then consider it a success. This is just a little bit of a bonus. Okay, so what I really, so what I really quickly wanna do is um, show you guys what the outline removal tool does. Um, like I told you guys before, there's a lot of node groups included with this specific um, purchase. And um, this one is the subgroup that does the outline removal. So what I'm gonna show you is what it does. So let's say we um, use our little image where the um, outline has been applied that goes into the image. And then we have, of course, our outline mask. This gives us the following image once I render it out. You see, there you go. You can see that it has removed the outline completely. So if I mute it, there's the outline. If I turn it back on, outline is removed. So all this does is it um, uses the mask to adjust it. And of course, I added another little group that um, can expand or contract the um, mask so you can clean it up uh, a lot easier. Also remember that the um, spikes do scale based on distance from the camera. This is for a um, very close distance. For the rest of it, it's pretty much default three. So just keep that in mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly render that first frame just so we um, can see something interesting. So let's take that one actually. It's not the first one, but it's still a good one. And there it is. <laughs> I kind of like this. This is very cool. I do remember that the spikes don't give outlines on the objects themselves generally. Um, that's more a thing that happens off the object, depending on depth, depending on depth. But uh, generally, um, the spikes get outlines only off of the object. So what I'll do is I'll render this out. What's really cool about this node group setup is that you can add other features to it. That's something that's really, really cool. So let's use um, a fan art example. So let's say you've got Sonic running a million miles an hour. 
I love Sonic, by the way. So you have Sonic running a million miles an hour, and um, you want all of the streaks that are currently happening to be a bright blue. What you can do is, is you can remove the image part of the fill completely and replace it with a solid color. It's as simple as that. So um, then we, all you have to do is you go into the node. Let me just uh, turn off the background and you find where the image actually gets smeared and processed. Uh, this is where we prevent the bleeding and Mix motion mask for clean outlines with low motion. That's not it. Spike outlines. Here we've got the outlines going. Now we are looking for the fill. So that's the spike mask. Special mask for motion spikes. So prevent the background from bleeding in. So I'm. This is. This must be the location. So let's do a quick test. Let's do a quick test. I have a hunch that this would be the fill. Let's look at the sample count. It is indeed the fill. So if you want to remove the fill completely or only partially, let's say you want to remove it partially. So what I would suggest then is mixing it with, let's say that blue thing again, uh, and let's make it a little bit brighter so that it's got that sheen, you know, that very sharp glare to it. And let's put that in there instead of our regular mix. Of course, I'm going to turn down the factor a little bit so we just get a little bit of that suggestion going, you know, with the lamp and all that kind of stuff. So now that we have that, I'm going to cancel this viewer node and go back outside of it and hit, of course, this right here. I'm just going to delete that because that's absolutely unnecessary. And we're going to look at a blue streak. And there you see it. It's, it's partially mixed with the, the colors and stuff, but because it's such a strong color, it's uh, fairly prominent. Now, of course, you can add some glow to this. Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. So you can um, really be creative with this thing and break it up to produce what you want it to produce. It's really, really, really flexible. Um, so have a great one. God bless you. And thank you for purchasing. If you haven't purchased yet, link in the description. It's very cheap. Check it out.